ladies and gentlemen, greetings and welcome. I have the privilege and the honor to introduce the speaker of the hour, Stephen Silver, a native Washingtonian and a sterling example of the best and the brightest DC public schools have to offer. AKA the American Griot, orator, poet, and activist, Howard University graduate, and now published author. Affectionately called by his beloved community as the poet. Yes, etching his place in history with his unique blend of fiery poetry and spellbinding speech making. Respected by the former director of ACLU as an oratorical genius. He speaks extensively throughout the Washington metropolitan area. Affiliated with dozens of Christian churches and a registered member of the Nation of Islam. Invited to speak at the White House on several occasions for the Clinton and the Gore administration. As a young man, he felt the call of God on his life. He says he wanted to be a pastor because God had given him a pastor's heart. But it was God who would change his trajectory of his life set his feet on a path, and seal his fate as a poet, one who has met the qualifying steps to call, to be called a servant of God, a servant of his people, a strong, courageous black man, a true modern day black nationalist poet, a freedom fighter, fighting for the freedom the justice and equality of the black man and black woman. Here is the hills and hells of North America. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, there is a time for everything, a time for every event under the sun, a time to keep silent and a time to speak without any further ado, I present to some and introduce to others Stephen Silver, up close and personal. So experience yourself with yourself, the power, the passion, the poet, the one you came out to hear. Let's receive him, the American Real. My goal, my mission, is to speak to the condition of hurting people, of poor people, of powerless people, be it African, be it Native, be it Hispanic, be it Asian, <laughs> or Asian. That was perfect timing, we want her. Be it man, be it woman, be it boy, be it girl. My goal is nothing short than to change the world. Starting with myself, my family, my community, my people. The Western Hemisphere, the globe. Being fully persuaded that hurt is hurt and pain is pain and hunger is hunger, irregardless of creed, class, or color. And in the end, in the end, to bear witness that I was a true follower of Jesus the Christ, to offer my life as the supreme and ultimate sacrifice. 
greetings, family and friends, colleagues and clergy, distinguished guests, sisters, brothers, and agents undercover. Like Brother Malcolm used to say, everybody's here. For those who don't know me, allow me to introduce myself. I am Stephen Silver, formerly known as the American Griot, now an orator, poet, activist that makes me an eroticist. I am your brother, your fellow freedom fighter, doing my very best to fight for the full and complete liberation, the full and complete and unadulterated liberation of the freedom, the justice, the equality of the black men and black women here in America. I am a proud product of the civil rights movement. I am a proud product of the black Muslim movement. Both movements unequivocally and equally great. I am the synthesis of Martin's love and Malcolm Free. And for those who don't know me, for those who don't have a clue, let me say right now that I'm pleased to meet you and for all others who just don't know it. I am the one they call the poet. In the name of the most high God, the beneficent, the merciful. And in the name of all the strong black freedom fighters. I come to you today as a modern day black nationalist, poet, freedom fighter, fighting for the freedom, the justice, the equality of our people. Yes, yes, I'm here today, but not as some prophet, no sage, no rabbi, no priest, but a poet, a voice, articulating the hurt and the pain of the suffering masses of our people who are not moving forward, a poet. But not just any poet, but one who would rise to the call of service. The beckoning of a generation. Yet, yet, I'm here today as a servant of an awesome God. Yet, a servant of an awesome people. The God who was our God. Before we were brought here to the hills and hells of North Virginia, the one of whom it was prophesied in the book of Exodus would come and to deliver his people, if indeed we represent the people in the prophetic fulfillment of Scripture who would be in bondage for over 400 years, whom afterwards God would come to deliver. Yet brought here to America, on the belly of slave ships, ships filled with dung and disease, they packed us in like sardines, traded us a mere sugar cane and coffee beans. They despised and rejected our people, our people, robbed, robbed of our name, robbed of our language, robbed of our history. Robbed of our culture, our folkways, our mores, our religion. Look at us. We have adopted the religion of our slave masters. And the proof of that, we have bowed down to worship the image of a lily white Jesus. Even up until today, even up until today, yet the scriptures clearly say of this Jesus that his skin would be like fine brass. Burnt in an oven, whose head and hair would be like lamb's wool, not some imposter, pale face, blue eyed, stringy, blonde hair, 
pasteurized, homogenized white Jesus of Hollywood. So listen up, listen up, all you listeners. Tonight I've come to take no prisoners. I come in the spirit of that strong black Muslim minister, Malcolm X, El Hajj Malik, El Shabazz, not some foot shuffling, boot licking, pacifist preaching, turn a non violent cheek, modern day Uncle Tom, a scraper preacher with some pie in the sky and selling in the street, dying by lullaby preacher, rocking our people to sleep. So I write this poetry to wake us up. I promise you, this will not be a simple collection, nor some sentimental or sermon. I know what you're probably already thinking, that this guy's barely out of his intro, yet has already managed to successfully step on your toes and offend half of those in the audience. But just stay with me. Just stay with me. Everything is going to be all right. We must be careful. We must be mindful that we're not raising a generation of cowards. We must be careful. We must be mindful. That we're not transferring our cowardice on to our children. Our babies, our children are looking to us. So we must teach them, train them to fight with those who fight with us. Teach them, train them, mold them, and make them. Teach them the hidden power behind the spoken word. Teach them how to transform their words into powerful thoughts and expression. Loose the knot in their tongue. Teach them not to be cowards, but to be bold and brave. From the cradle to the grave. Never has there been a time so crucial to break our silence. A time to stand up and to speak out on what we feel is right and just. A time to cast away the modern day shackles that have left us bound, disabled, undetermined, yet undeterred. A time to redirect our resources and to look to none another than ourselves to solve the problems that have become uniquely and inherently ours. A time to take our place as a people in an ever-increasing, ever-changing mix that we call America. Since we as blacks historically have not and seemingly cannot find justice here in America, we are compelled to send a strong and clear message that if we want justice and we want justice somewhere else, then we will have this justice by any means necessary. For America, since you will not heed the cries of our mothers and fathers who have lost their babies at the hands of a cruel, corrupt, criminal white police department and a broken judicial system, both either unwilling or totally incapable of producing justice with it. The race situation in America is unstable, volatile, and potentially explosive. We must act now, or this ticking time bomb will explode. We who can must clearly articulate their legitimate discontent and frustration over a broken police department and a broken judicial system, both either unwilling or totally incapable of producing justice with it. To ignore race as a factor in determining how we should respond to other races would be a serious and costly mistake. It has been said that unless we learn from the lessons of history that we will be condemned to repeat. Dr. Philip McGraw, a prominent psychologist of our time, 
repeatedly says that the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. We as blacks have irrefutable evidence that our relationship to whites have always been troubled, lacking to say the least. It would be wrong of me, a fallacy, fallacia, for me to condemn all whites, particularly whites of this new generation who have done our people no harm. But it would be equally wrong of me not to recognize them for who and what they are. They are the children and the children's children and the children's children. They are the benefactors, the white benefactors, the white benefactors of our former slave masters. That if this generation of whites wants to show goodwill, their faith towards the black man, if they want to explore a universal brotherhood among races, if they can want for the black man what they want for themselves, if they can undo and disavow the thinking of white supremacy, they can begin by giving children of slaves their deserved reparations. This, this will be the litmus test. Otherwise, this generation of whites will prove that they're no better than past generation of whites who have mistreated our fathers and their fathers, and their fathers, and of course, their fathers, generation after generation. Tom a goat, Tom Hamaco, white America, I'm not afraid of you, but you should be afraid of me. For you cannot censor nor silence me. I'm a goat. Anybody in their right mind who sees a ghost should be afraid. You see, I'm a ghost. I'm the ghost of Emmett Till, the ghost of Nat Turner, the ghost of Trayvon Martin, the ghost of Eric Garner, the ghost of Tamara Rice, the ghost of Sandra Bland. And we as a people will not be dismayed or daunted. Oh, America, you will forever be haunted. I'm a ghost. I'm not afraid of you. But you should be afraid of me. For you cannot censor nor silence me. I'm not some sissify, punctify, pacifist leader. I'm a strong and courageous black man. I'm a stone cold, modern day black nationalist, poet, freedom fighter, fighting for the freedom, the justice, and the equality of the black man and black woman here in the hills and hells of North America. White America, I'm not afraid of you, and I will have the last word. And that word is boo. I am amazed. I am astounded at your glaring lack of understanding of the black experience. Your lack of sympathy. Your lack of empathy. Your lack of sensitivity. You are blinded by your arrogance or just plain ignorance. Eclipsed only by your stubbornness and overall unwillingness to learn from the errors of your way. White America. White America. America, white America. You speak as though you had clean hands, as if though you were removed, removed from the guilt, the blame, the culpability, Lending to the downfall, the destruction, and the demise of the black man and the black woman here in the hills and hells of North America. Only God can exonerate you from the sins you've made, but you cannot escape nor deny responsibility for the role you play. Your conscience is seared, you're numb to the pain and suffering you cause. And like the romantic fool, you wonder why love. Is lost. Don't look at me like I said something wrong. I make no apology for the way I speak. For I will be held accountable before God and God alone that I was a mouthpiece, that I was the voice, a voice of the voiceless. That my voice would be their voice. That their hurts would be my hurt. That their pain would be my pain. To articulate, enunciate, and communicate. 
their hurt, pain, and suffering of what it is to be a black man and black woman here in the hills and hills of North America. This is what makes me an effective poet. So forgive me if I come across a little, if I offend you. Forgive me if I come across a little too strong. Forgive me if I come across a little too black. But in the words of my big brother, Khaled Muhammad, I don't give a damn who you think I am. If I know who I am and whose I am, I am the poet. Hear me speak. Hear me roar. Let me be. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. But what do I know? I'm just a poet. 